there are a lot of easy mistakes that you need to stop making in Apex Legends. And in fact, these mistakes are really easy to stop and can completely change your performance in game. Sometimes it's as easy as just consciously being aware of these things and it can massively improve how successful you are in winning fights and winning games. Now, this information applies to everybody. Some of these tips are going to be useful for some of you and some others are going to be useful for a different set of players, depending on how your playstyle is. But even if you're playing the game for thousands of hours already, it's probably something you can take from this video. So, firstly, stop peeking angles so predictably. This is something I've been doing for years, and it's only until the last few months that I've actually learned to sort of consciously be aware of this. Let's say you've got a longbow, right? And there's a player pretty far away. You keep peeking an angle, like the side of a building, to take shots on that player in between the shots of your longbow. So that, you know, you're in cover when you're not able to shoot and you're out of cover when you are. It's a good idea to do that, but if you're peaking that angle at the same pace, same frequency, and taking the same distance away from cover each time, you are an easy target. It becomes very easy to predict when you're coming in and out of cover for players on the other side to just hold their crosshair and wait for you to peek back into the same position you were just a couple seconds ago. So the easy way to fix this is when you're taking a peek battle, you're peeking in and out of cover to shoot, take different angles. You could step sideways just like a foot in front of you, you could step sideways quickly a couple feet in front of you. You could back off slightly and then peek at a further position away from the cover you have. You could crouch peek as well. All of this allows you to peek at different angles, which is going to completely confuse the player and not give them the chance to just pre-aim and wait for you. Also, peek at different frequencies. Let's say you're normally peaking every 0.5 seconds, right? Just sometimes just stop for a second. And then other times, peak more frequently. Try and mix it up just so that the player on the other side doesn't know what you're going to do. This forces them to actually move their crosshair actively to aim on you instead of just waiting for you to line up into their crosshair. Another one is almost the opposite in a way. Stop getting caught out in the open. Apex Legends map design is actually really amazing, giving you the opportunity to move from cover to cover almost all the time. You can go from point A to point B by going from cover to cover, whether it is going from a building to a rock to a car to another building or using the different heights and depths in terrain to avoid line of sight of players nearby. When you are moving through the map, you should always consciously be thinking about how to move from point A to point B and always try and have cover by your side as much as humanly possible. Because if you do not have cover by your side, there's a good chance there could be someone aiming at you in the distance that's ready to shoot at you. And if you take damage whilst you're out in the open, you then have to run to cover and you're taking that risk of dying as you run to cover. The further you are away from cover when you get shot, of course, the more likely you're going to die. And this mistake is all down to you you and the way that you position yourself in game. Another one is to stop firing so fast. Now, obviously, it makes sense. The quicker that you fire, say with a scout or a wingman or a PK, the more damage you're going to potentially output, right? So a lot of people try and fire as fast as humanly possible to try and get out more damage and beat the enemies. But sometimes this is not the right way. And a good example of why this is true is if you pair the alternator against the R99, if players miss some shots with the R99, the player with the alternator is probably going to win because they just have more bullets to miss, essentially, right? So if you're shooting really fast but missing all your shots anyway, it's not worth it. Try slowing it down a little bit. You're more likely to have a higher accuracy, hit more shots, and take down a player. This is more true for slower firing weapons, especially at longer distances, and I would really recommend trying this on the Rampage, Scout, and Repeater. If you fire really fast with these weapons, it's actually really hard to control the recoil, but if you just slow down your fire rate a little bit, the recoil just basically resets by itself, and then you can get in a good rhythm of firing. We all know Apex is a super high intense, high mobility, high momentum game where trying to input as much movement as possible in a short period of time sometimes feels like the right thing to do, but this can actually mean that you may be strafing too fast. If you're tapping A and D or moving your joystick back and forth really quickly in an attempt to strafe faster, you're actually probably just moving like this. Longer, wider strafes are far more effective in this game and there's two reasons. 
Firstly, you're creating a larger arc for players to have to move their aim, right? They actually have to actively move their aim to hit you. With a shorter strafe, you're just standing still. They don't actually have to move their aim at all. And once players get more experience and they learn this kind of strafe style, they're not going to move their aim. This little jolty movement back and forth is going to be useless. Another great thing about doing longer, wider strafes is as you get more experience with this, you can actually cut it short. So let's say you're doing a long, wide strafe and then maybe every Every couple seconds you decide to just turn the other way, it can completely confuse your enemy. As they start to learn to track you by doing a predictable strafing pattern with this long wide strafe, you can confuse them again by quickly just cutting your movement and moving in the opposite direction. Speaking of movement, sometimes you may be thinking about movement a little too much. Apex is a movement based shooter. Movement is really important, but as long as you got strafing and crouching down to a maximum, I would say the more important thing to think about is your positioning, who can see you and how much they can see of you. Once again, this comes back to the point of always thinking about how cover is nearby. Being behind cover and just peeking in and out at the right angles is far more effective than doing tap strafes, wall jumps, all sorts of high level flashy movement. There's a time for that and it can work well, but you should be conscious of how you are moving, how that can affect what the enemy actually sees and deals with. A good example of this is these clips here. You can see these players bunny hopping, trying to move out in the open, but in a lot of cases, just being smarter about the time spent outside of cover is far better than doing these high level movements. And you should start with the basics before you try and actually implement these things into high level play. Now, of course, if you're just having fun, go wild, do all the sort of crazy movement tricks that you can. But if you're actually trying to play, let's say to rank up or, or win a game, then you should think about actually sometimes the simpler movement techniques, the simpler way of positioning is better. And this is why players like Imperial Hal, Shiv FPS can do so unbelievably well because their knowledge of positioning and their knowledge of how enemies react to the way they move is really high level. They understand how to position themselves to get the perfect angles and to make sure that the enemies have a very minimal amount of time viewed on them. I think for this next mistake, I really need to paint a picture to fully describe it because it's very situational, but it's something that I think a lot of players need to think about. You need to stop ego challenging fights. Let's paint a picture, right? You're peeking an angle and you're fighting a player 1v1, you're dealing damage and you're both really low and you just decide to stick it out, stay there and, you know, you may die or they may die, but are you making the right choice there? That decision really comes down to two things, how quickly that engagement is happening and actually more importantly, what is going on around you? It's way too easy to fall in these sort of ego challenge fights where you're thinking in your head, yeah, I can aim better than them. I'm going to hold this angle. I'm going to keep firing. But even if you get that knock on that player, are you doing the right thing for your team? Is you having low health in that moment a good idea? You've got to think about two things, right? Firstly, what are the enemies in the area doing, including third parties? If you ego challenge this fight for too long and stay in this sort of duel where it's just going on a little bit too long, are you losing your potential to help your teammates, right? Because in an ideal situation, if you're just 1v1ing this player, what's going on with the rest of your team? You need to be aware of the fact of, you know, where your team is, how they're engaging, because if you're trading with this player, and it really is coming down to the wire, but your teammate is there to back you up, then it's fine. That's a good choice to make. But if you're just doing a simple 1v1 and you, your teammates and even the enemies are completely elsewhere, you may actually be better off just to reset, even if you lose out on that kill. There are those definite moments where in your head you're thinking, am I, am I peaking this too much? Should I back off? Like, this fight's going on way too long. I'm not hitting my shots. Neither is he. Like... Just, just back off, right? Back off, reunite with your team, heal up, reset, whatever. Now this situation, like I said, is really situational, but I just want to think about like, when you have these really long 1v1s, which just don't end, eventually you just got to ask yourself, am I drawing this out too long? Where's my team, right? And usually, depending on where your team is, you can find out the right answer. Another thing is, you shouldn't use your abilities too early. I think this is a mistake a lot of people make, especially for ultimate abilities. Things like Gibraltar's ult, Horizon's ult, Seer's ult, 
caustic salt. These sort of like really heavily powerful ultimates which can change the flow of a fight should be used when you really need them to. This is a simple one to be honest, just when you have your ult available, think am I going to need this right now or am I going to need it in two minutes? Especially in the end game, it's usually the latter, but it's just a question you simply have to ask yourself each time and as you play more you learn more about when it's right to use your ult but usually holding on to it to the most pressuring situations is the best play to make have you noticed any mistakes you've been making recently if you have leave them below and maybe we can learn from each other cheerio